So one of you got upset because I called Henry Cooper a journeyman at the time he fought Muhammad Ali for the first time. <clears throat> Not sure why, but I'll try to answer that in the next few minutes, as well as get into some other topics for the day of the day. So give the video a like, comment, sub, that AJ Usyk film study is up on Patreon, so go check it out. Real quick about that, AJ, as shown in that video, um, improved quite a bit from the first to the second fight. Now, obviously, it wasn't enough, but we knew that if AJ is to adjust, Usyk will likely adjust as well, and that's exactly what happened. But um, all of that, or at least some of AJ's and then Usyk's sub subsequent adjustments are in that video on Patreon. But real quick, AJ improved his footwork, he improved his stance, he improved his defense, <clears throat> and... He improved his, well, punch technique and desire, right? Anyway, that was easy to see. Anyway, um, so back to the topic at hand. Um, what's a journeyman? Well, now, these days, a lot of boxing fans will use the term journeyman as a slight, right? To, to say the guy is essentially a bum. No, a bum is a bum. A journeyman is a journeyman. That's why we have... Uh, different words for that now we're gonna go on a bit of a tangent here i don't like to use the word purist when it comes to boxing because that in and of itself has been every, everything just about everything you know about boxing or we used to know about boxing has been taken and turned upside down right for example purist it's that term has been inverted so much that someone like Andre Ward, who is a very dirty fighter, and by no means he is the antithesis of a pure boxer, right? Uh, that's what they call him, right? They call him a pure boxer and a virtuoso. When, what, what's a pure boxer, right? Well, what is pure boxing? Well, someone who does nothing but box they don't use wrestling they don't use you know muay thai they don't they don't use any of these other fighting arts they use pure boxing and andre ward is the antithesis of a pure boxer right but it's gotten to a point the boxing uh boxing ideology has been so inverted that you have guys like max kellerman saying that you have to be a purist to enjoy a guy like um, Andre Ward, and, and they started doing that, well, they started doing that a long time ago, but they were also trying that a little bit with B-Hop, right? But not as much because there were enough of us slick old coons still around to, to call bullshit on that, right? But they, they already started that narrative with Bernard Hopkins saying, oh, you have to be a purist to enjoy, you know, a guy that doesn't box for half the fight, but uses all these illegal, dirty, not pure moves, right? So dirty boxing has become pure boxing. So, and that's an extreme example of how boxing has been inverted, basically. So the, the term, going back to the topic at hand, journeyman has been used to denote a bomb by some people, right? When in reality, it, it means a very good fighter, just not good enough, right? But so what's a journeyman? A journeyman is um, a, con a guy that is a contender at some point in his career, probably, but not a top, top contender, right? A guy that may have had some title fight fights, but failed, right? He is the kind of guy that will show up, give it a good go, right? Give it an earnest effort. He will test the young guys, but ultimately he will fail against top contenders and champions, right? That's a journeyman. So like the quintessential example of a journeyman, and I guess that's debatable because he was often hailed, uh, you know, an uncrowned champion, at least for some portion of his career. But to take his entire career into... Uh, to, to, to try to sum up his entire career, I think Journeyman would be a perfect perfect name for him. And that would be someone like Glenn Johnson, right? A Journeyman. Very good fighter. Uh, championship level at 
at a sh even short point of his career, but maybe a little bit unfortunate, right? But overall, his career was that of a journeyman, right? Very good fighter, but not quite good enough, right? And some of that was due to corruption or whatever, but there it was, right? So someone like <clears throat> Darnell Boone, right? Very good fighter, and he'll test the young guys on the come up, but just not good enough to make it to the tippy top, right? And maybe by now he's a bum, but you know, if if he was, if he were to characterize his career with one word, that would be journeyman, right? So, because again, boxing has been inverted. Now journeyman somehow means a bum, right? Now I don't like to call myself a boxing purist, but anyone who understands, because look, because that term is being used. Uh, by boxing hipsters to basically say I'm a better boxing fan than you and they don't even know what it means right you have like the boxing purist podcast right a couple of guys or one guy maybe by now out of the UK uh, calling Andre Ward a virtuoso how are you a boxing purist and it's, it's nonsense right you don't know anything about boxing it is what it is but I know I know you've been in the gym and you sparred and you know you got beat up by by bums and journeymen okay yeah but you still don't know shit about boxing, right? So, uh, Henry Cooper was a journeyman. At the time he fought Muhammad Ali, he was the Ring Magazine's top 10 contender, right? At maybe at one point in his career, not at that point, but at one point in his career, he got as high as the number five Ring Magazine heavyweight contender, right? So he was never a top contender, top, top contender. He got a couple of chances at the title, maybe one, I don't remember. But he fought uh, he fought Ali for the title the second time, I believe. And he fought some former or future champions also, lineal champions, like, I believe, oh, hey, here's his record. I know he fought Joe Hansen, who wasn't champion yet, but he became lineal, I think. And he also fought um, Patterson, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, Floyd Patterson, who was no longer a champion, right? Was he? I don't think he was. Yeah, he wasn't. Anyway, so yeah, he was a good fighter, but never a top contender and never, never a champion. So yeah, he was a journeyman. That's perfectly fine to call him a journeyman, especially... Even if you could make an argument that at one little point of his career, he was a top contender, which never happened. Uh, at the time he fought Muhammad Ali, the first time, he was just a journeyman. I mean, he what was his record? Well, let, let's check out his record real quick, right? He was 27, 8, and 1 at the time he fought Muhammad Ali. And he was Ring Magazine's number 10 contender, right? He was a journeyman. Get over it. Now, that guy who disagrees with the obvious, what should be obvious anyway, also stated that uh, he was as good as Chisora. Um, what's his face? Henry Cooper. Now, I would say that, yes, Derek Chisora was also a journeyman, right? Uh, never a top contender but has had some chances, some opportunities at titles, world titles, and never got over the hump, right? Uh, but he, he's always been around, and if he's there to actually give it a go, he'll test anybody, right? Hurt young Tyson Fury, beat Parker, arguably, the first time, beat Dillian White, arguably, the first time. Some people think he beat Puliev, right? Like, he could never quite get over the hump. But he would give these guys a good fight, right? Gave Usyk a very tough fight. Uh, so, yeah, I would say he was also a journeyman, right? Uh, but when you look at their record, right, they're very comparable insofar as, as wins and losses. Very, very comparable, actually. Their winning ratio to loss ratio. But Henry Cooper got stopped a lot more, and he stopped fewer people relatively speaking right so he didn't he didn't have the same kind of skill to stop people and he was also stopped a lot more himself now mostly due to cuts but it is what it is right and but if you know if we are to think that he's so great or he was good 
how come he seemingly never adjusted to the fact that he had thin skin, he was damaged goods, and would just, like, he knew better than anybody else how he got cut, where he got cut, and why he got cut, right? And yet, it would seem he never really adjusted to that, right? Now, when I looked at Chisora, and I'm in that video saying that he fought, uh, Usyk fought a much better version of Chisora than Tyson Fury the second time around, right? I showed you the technical adjustments that Chisora has made throughout his career, right? So Chisora has actually, he is a quintessential journeyman. He stayed at the same level his entire career, right? Henry Cooper um, had ups and downs in his career. I mean, so did Chisora, but he had ups and downs insofar as his level, right? You could even make an argument that at one point in his career, he was just a bum, right? I mean, look at, you know, he, he had four losses in a row. Look, Henry Cooper was losing to guys that are 22 and 6, right? 14 and 7. Uh, Well, Zoro Foley was a pretty good fighter, so, and he had a lot of fights. A guy like 26 and 8, right? Derek Chisora got criticized for losing to Ajit Kabayao, right? And he should be criticized for it, don't get me wrong. But that that was a majority decision to a guy that was 16 and 0, right? Derek Chisora, he would never lose to the types of guys that Henry Cooper lost to. When you just. Derek Chisora fought. When he lost, he lost to top 10 guys only, right? Now, maybe you can make an argument. No, what's his face? Hellenius was a top 10 guy at one point. I'm not sure if he was top 10 at the time. he. I think he was at the time he fought Chisora. But those are like the only guys that Chisora would lose to, right? And Henry Cooper also lost to, you know, other journeymen and maybe bums. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, of course Chisora was better. They they fought at about the same level, but Chisora was better. Just look at their records, right? Just look at their records. So, um, and the thing about Chisora is that he's been very consistent at staying at the level that he stayed at, right? The only guys he's ever lost to is top top guys, right? Top five, top ten kind of guys, except that one Ajit Kabayel loss, right? Which, you know, I think he fought on the road, and the guy was undefeated. It was a close majority decision, you know, blah, 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 blah. But other than that, look at look at the guys that he lost to. It's all top 10, top 10, top 10, top 10 guys, or future top 10 guys, right? Promising up and coming. I think Fury at the time was top 10 already. Anyway, so yeah, they were both journeymen, but Chisora was better, right? It's it's all there. It, it's all there, right? Right. So in 1960, let's go back a decade. Did you know you could look up Ring Magazine top 10 ratings for every division since the inception of the Ring Magazine? So Henry Cooper was, uh, 1958, he was number four contender. Not 59, he was the number four contender. So not a top contender, right? Number four. And then he was number five in 1960. Eight in 1961. In 1962, he was number 10, and he fought uh, Cassius Clay in 1963, right? So he was he was on his on the slide in so far as his rank magazine ranking, and he was the barely top 10, right? And I don't, I don't think he's ever gotten back to that that same level. Maybe he was once yeah, he was number nine later on, a few years later, you know. So he's never really gotten back to the top right oh and another argument for you know how good he supposedly was and because and that he wasn't a journeyman is because he was winning like the english or british i don't know and commonwealth titles right yeah but those are like who cares when we're talking about the world title world contention right when, when we're talking about being a contender we're talking about the lineal title right who cares about these trinkets? That's like winning the Commonwealth. Don't don't even talk to me about the the English title, right? Like or the British or whatever it was, right? Winning the Commonwealth title. At least that's what it should be, right? Because Commonwealth is 
I don't know exactly the order, but that's the most prestigious one, right? Because the Commonwealth is bigger than all of its parts, right? And what is the Commonwealth? I don't know exactly, but let me just take again. There are like 14 or 20 countries and principalities or something like that, right? I mean, if you're counting the Isle of Jersey and, and shit like that, you know, it's it's peanuts, right? But But something along those lines. So like the Commonwealth title is essentially like winning the WBO Asia Pacific title, right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's the type of level journeyman fight at. And when you look at these titles, um, especially in Cooper's day and age, look look at the kind of guys that fought for the title, right? 31, 13, and 2. And Cooper himself probably had 10 losses by then or something like that. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you got guys with double-digit losses contending for the Commonwealth title, well, what does that say about the Commonwealth title, right? It, it's not that prestigious. It's not a very high-level title, right? You, you're telling me that there are no... What you're saying to me is that there are no undefeated, up-and-coming, or a couple losses, two, three losses, uh, guys worthy of fighting for that title because they suck, or they're just too good, and they move to world level, and they skip this this nonsense, right? No, no, that's not fair. It's not nonsense. It's, you know, it, it's good to have these sort of regional titles because that's how you, you know, separate um, men from boys, if you will, or the... the wheat from the chaff, if you will, right? And it gives, it, it's a good measuring stick at, at a certain level, and that's fine. You know, that's how you build yourself up. That's how you, uh, you know, develop a fighter, so on and so forth. It's, it's a good tool. It, I'm glad that these little titles exist, but it's not overrated, right? It's the WBO Asia Pacific. You know what I mean? That, that's essentially what it is, the Commonwealth title, right? If we're If we're talking about the, British title, well, that's like, you know, winning winning the Japanese title or, or OPBF Japanese title or something like that. I don't know. I don't even know what these titles are. I don't care. They don't they don't mean anything insofar as world title, right? Lineal title contention. They're irrelevant. So yeah, Derek Chisora and Henry Cooper were both both journeymen. Uh, Derek Chisora was a better journeyman. He fought at a higher level. He was more successful. And he fought a higher level of opposition. And he has a better record against higher level of opposition. And, um, you know, when I looked at Chisora and showed you the technical improvements, he, how, how much... That might have been actually his best performance, what he did against Usyk, right? And this should explain to you, because look... People are coming out saying, oh, that Usyk struggled with Chisora, right? So what they're doing is they're downgrading Chisora, right? They're, they're treating Chisora like, well, let's say, a bomb or not that good, not good at all. Definitely not as good as he was in that fight, right? And based off of this perception, they all unanimously pick AJ to knock Usyk out, right? Now, that doesn't happen, right? So So what happened in your assessment, right? Well, you don't know what you're looking at, right? Clearly, you underestimated how good Chisora was in that fight. That's the only logical explanation, right? But instead of correcting that, right, recognizing that, especially since I show you the film, I got some people coming around saying, it's nonsense, right? Tyson Fury fought a much better Chisora, right? Because, and the argument is, well, because he had fewer losses and he was younger. Now, okay, but then you'll turn around and you'll say, that, oh, uh, well, this loss made him a better fighter, right? Uh, because this or that guy lost, it made him a better fighter. So there's there's a counter argument to that, right? Uh, Chisora was more experienced, right? He had fought at a much higher level since he fought to Tyson Fury, right? He became a more experienced fighter, blah, 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 right? Now, if all we have is box rec, right? And a guy is at the end of his career and he has more losses than at the beginning of his career. But when you look at Chisora, like, you know, Usyk fought him all coming off three wins, and then he beat Parker, arguably, and then lost to Parker, and then had, you know, then lost to Pulev, but officially it's a win, right? So Chisora's record is basically, you know, 
Yeah, he's got a, a string of bums that he fought where he just kept winning, and then he stepped up to a certain level, and it's just been green and red, more or less 50-50, right? Anyway, but normally if, if all we have is box rec, and a guy is at the end of his career, right, and he's fighting someone versus at the beginning of his career when he's undefeated fighting someone or maybe only has, you know, has fewer losses anyway, then, yeah, I think it's that's the only evidence we have. That's fair to say that when he was younger, he was had fewer losses. He was more in his prime, blah, 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 right? But then you also have to look at the level of opposition he was beating or, or losing to. And again, with, with Chisora, he's maintained, he stayed at the same level, basically, insofar as his wins and losses column. But if that's all we have, that's all we have. Fair enough. Right. I've used this argument in the past, but there's such a thing as hierarchy of evidence. Right. If we have the fights to look at, then we can look at the fights. And when you look at Chisora in the Usyk fight, I pointed all this out. I mean, he is far technically far better than the guy that fought Tyson Fury. And it had nothing to do with what Tyson Fury was doing, because the first second of the first round, Tyson Fury didn't do anything. And when we just look at what Chisora is doing before Tyson Fury does anything himself, and we take that same comparison looking at the Usyk fight. It wasn't anything that Usyk did or, or, or Tyson Fury did. Chisora came out a certain guy. You're telling me that because of what Tyson Fury did in that fight, Chisora wasn't switching stances? What other fights was Chisora a, a switch hitter? What other fight was Chisora shifting stances, throwing punches from both stances? What, what other fight was Chisora gliding right before Tyson Fury, instead of jumping up and down in the air, right? So he, I don't understand how you could look at the evidence. It's right in front of you, right? It's easy to point out. There it is, right? Uh, Usyk clearly fought a much better version of Chisora, technically, and a Chisora that's still, still a journeyman level, right? Still more or less at the same level in the grand scheme of things, but much improved, technically, much improved technically so that, that i don't know how you dismiss the film and and just want to be a box trick warrior like but that's how you predict fights right that's why you thought aj was going to knock usik out so i mean you know i, I don't understand how it, like it's fine and good if you know you want to question me i am definitely wrong about things sometimes right but I mean, how do you question, question the evidence? How do, how do you just reject the evidence, right? You could question me, but I mean, evidence, the proof is in the pudding, right? This is why you suck at predicting fights, because you just you reject reality. It is what it is. I mean, I don't know what else to say about that. So there is such a thing as hierarchy of evidence, and and the action in the ring, right, because we're all boxing fans, is the first and foremost, most important evidence of how good a guy is, right? Right? So, yeah, in closing, Henry Cooper was a journeyman, which isn't to say he was a bum, because I didn't call him a bum, I called him a journeyman. And just because uh, the name journeyman has been misused and inverted, to mean a guy, a guy that sucks by some boxing fans who call themselves boxing purists, even though they're really MMA or dirty boxing fans and have no idea what pure versus dirty means. Well, that just proves what I'm saying to be correct, right? Likewise, Derek Chisora is, was a journeyman, but as the record shows, a better one and one that has looking at the film if you want to do a film study of Henry Cooper and show me the advancements, uh, improvements that he's made technically, I'll be glad to watch it. Send me a link. But as the evidence proves, as the evidence shows, uh, Derek Chisora, even though he's always remained at that journeyman status, he's been very consistent staying at that level throughout his entire career. And he's actually made technical improvements and become a better fighter in his la later um, days 
And as somebody stated, I don't know if this is true or not, Chisora himself admitted that he wasn't dedicated for a period of time there. And, you know, he's in the Tyson Fury fight telling his coach, my legs aren't working. Whatever that meant, there it was, right? Uh, so, you know, fighters improve even in what generally is considered to be an age where a fighter should deteriorate, right? It could happen that they actually improve, as it is the case with fighters these days, right? Golovkin is 41 or 42, still at the top. Pacquiao at the age of 40-something, 40 years old, beat a top-level contender in way, way above his natural weight division, right? When he beat Thurman. So the proof is in the pudding, right? And the pudding are the fights. So... We could be box rec warriors. I'm not going to do that because that's not being a boxing purist, obviously. And even though I don't like using that term, you should know by now how much I, I bitch and moan about dirty fighting, cheating, corruption, right? Uh, that I am a boxing purist, right? But I don't like using that term because that term in and of itself has been inverted. And, and the meaning of it has been changed, right? So... As a boxing purist, I like to look at boxing first and foremost, the action in the ring. And what what what's the saying when it comes to that? Um, I forget what the saying is, but something like the ring is the ultimate lie detector, or it's the truth test. It's the the action in the ring tells all. There's there's a variety of different ways this has been put. It, it does. It, I don't know exactly what what the saying is. I'm trying to use here, but it'll come to me one day, I guess. Anyway, yeah, that's the um, the ring verifies right everything basically. That's that's the ultimate test of any boxer's skill, right? It's what happens in the ring, not what happens on box rec, not what boxing historians tell you to, you know, get your clicks and likes and views and so on and so forth. Uh, the ring tells all, basically, and and I think it's the highest uh, form, insofar as hierarchy of evidence, it, it's, it's highest on that hierarchy of evidence. And anytime you want to make statements about uh, how good these fighters are and, and how they should be ranked, so on and so forth. The ring is really it, right? The action in the ring is what we should be looking at first and foremost, obviously, right? So, yeah, that's my video. Uh, a journeyman is not a slight. It's just a way of describing who Henry Cooper, Derek Chisora, um, and many, many, many other good fighters, but not good enough, exactly what they were right journeyman so yeah that's my video thanks for watching oh 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 before i go he struggled with chisora right <laughs> i guess chisora is better than aj i guess